This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Supernatural provision in famine. Let's go to Genesis 26. Well, we're going to read verse 1 to 5. Today, if you are talking with most people, you know, they will tell you about the price of things in the market, even though they are not market women. Some men even complain more. Some have even gone to the point of taking over shopping from their wives but they are finding out that the woman is a better economist than themselves. Women, can you not say amen? amen? All those men should repent in Jesus' name. Because if you go, your own will cost more than the woman's own. <laughs> That's just the reality now. Hallelujah. Women know how to stretch money. Anyway, let's look at the Word of God. Genesis 26 verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And we give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. If you read properly between the lines, you will notice that what the Lord said in this season of famine was that Isaac, because of your father Abraham, I'm going to intervene for you. Now, hearing the voice of God and following direction is key to your provision. Someone say with me, hearing the voice of God and following direction is key to my provision. You will notice that he had specific instruction to stay in Gera. In this season we are in, you can't be moving anyhow. Praise God. As you spend time with God, you've got to follow the leading of the Lord. Psalm 32, verses 8 and 9. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way in which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which had no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with, in with beat and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. There was a famine in the land, but for Isaac to survive, he had to hear from God. For you to survive, you have to hear from God. I want you to know that what is happening economically today, what is happening economically today, you are not, it's not surprising God at all. 
He said he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I want to say to a child of God this morning that God knows where that job is. I said your God knows where that job is. I want to say to you, God knows where the opportunities are. God knows where the big clients are. God knows where the open doors are. I want to say to you, when you come into your place of business in the morning, learn to lift up your hand and say, my father is the good shepherd. I can hear the voice of God. I am led by the Spirit of God today. Child of God, I will say to you this morning, the God of heaven, he will lead you to the green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He did not say, I may not want. He said, I shall. Shall is the strongest assertion in the English language. I shall not want. Bashaka, according to the house of man. Bashaka, I, I am confident. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A teacher's child should not be facing failing exam. If your mother is teaching mathematics, you should not be failing mathematics. Um, you may fail. Maybe you are not a good student. I want to say God that owns everything cannot fail to lead you where the green pastures are. Hallelujah. The woman who is running a restaurant and selling food, the children cannot come home and say, we have not eaten since morning. Is somebody talking to me this morning? I said, the woman doing mama put, the woman selling food, selling rice, is running a restaurant. How can the children say, mama, we didn't eat breakfast, we didn't eat lunch, we didn't eat dinner. Is it possible? Your father cannot own it all and you will go hungry. Child of God, I'm saying to you this morning, hunger is not your problem. Portion. Lack is not your portion. Struggling is not your portion. They may struggle in this season, but you will not struggle in this season. Your father owns it all. And because your father owns it all, he said, I, you shall not want. I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anointed your head with oil and your cup is going to run over. I'm saying to a child of God in this season, you shall not want. I said, I'm saying you shall not want. You your father owns it all. If you believe that, can you lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of hallelujah in the house of the Lord? Your father owns it all this morning. Your father owns it all this morning. I say your father owns it all this morning. I say your father owns it all this morning. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. You are the child of the king, the owner of the universe, the cattle on a thousand hills, they belong to him. As you step out this morning, there shall be provision ahead of you. As you step out this morning, there shall be provision ahead of you. As you step out this morning, there shall be provision ahead of your children. He prepared a table. A table for next week has already been prepared. A table for next month has already been prepared. A table for December has already been prepared. We shall not lack. If you agree with me, lift your hand and give the Lord a better shout of hallelujah. Please sit down for a bit. The Seraphonician woman said, Jesus, if you don't get bread, give me crumbs. You know crumbs? How many of you know akara? Bean cakes. Crumbs. We call them what? Koyo koyo. Huh? Koyo koyo. You know koyo koyo? Sometimes koyo koyo is even sweeter than the real akara itself. Children like to pack that one and they'll be doing like this. This, this woman said, if you say healing is for the children, koyo koyo will heal me. What is that telling you and I? The one who made everything, his own child cannot eat. It's not possible. So can you say I'm a child of God? He owns everything. He is leading me this week into the green pastures of provision. I will not lack. My children will not lack. My organization will not lack. My business will not lack. Because this week, the God of heaven, Jehovah El Shaddai, is leading me to the green pastures of provision. 
If you believe that, I'll give him a wave offering this morning. That's the way we must think now. Please be seated. That's the way we must think now. So that you will not be arguing too much about money in your house. I'll give you 50,000. Eh, we, uh, we bought now. Eh? Is this all 50,000 can buy? Is it our fault? You must go market now, Oga. Oga, go market yourself. They will finish you before you come back. If the woman said this is what she bought, just thank God. Though. But if you go by yourself, you won't buy half of that. She has customer, you don't have customer. Woman, am I telling the truth? Your customer knows your voice. When you say, a customer, you don't come. When Oga come with big car, say, hey, Oga, if it's 10,000, say, Oga, 50,000. That's your car, you are paying for your car. How many of you know if you are driving a nice car, you pay nice money. But if you are driving a jalopy, you pay jalopy money. You go and carry one big car, you want to buy yam. They will look you first. If they are selling 20,000, they will look you and say, hmm, this must smells like 100,000. When they call it, they say, hey! <laughs> you start negotiating, oh God, but you can afford it now. I never pay school fees. Hallelujah. God will lead you this week. If your father owns it all, you will not lack. And God will lead you. How will he lead you? That peace will come. That sudden feeling that you should turn right now will come. Somebody you have not thought about, you just start thinking about them. Someone will say, make a call now. You make that, ah, we have been looking for you. Nobody's claiming that one. No. Oh, we have been looking for you. Ah, where have you been? Your payment has been ready now. Hallelujah. If you look at the story of Elijah, the brook dried up. He had the voice of God and went to Zarephath. When Jesus felt the multitude, the Bible said he knew what he was going to do. There was a boy with five loaves and two fishes. There was another time Jesus needed money. He said, go to the lake. The first fish you will catch will have money in his mouth. God has many ways of providing for us. Don't limit God. Sometimes the person God will use to help you is the last person you have in mind. Elijah, God sent a vulture to give him food. Vulture is an unclean bird. His religion did not allow him to hit vulture. How much more food from vulture's hand? But that was provision at the time. Another thought is that the covenant of blessing in Christ Jesus, say with me, the covenant of blessing in Christ Jesus is active in my life, irrespective of season and location. So the covenant of blessing in Christ Jesus is active in your life, irrespective of season and location. Now, listen, where we read, God told him, Stay there because of Abraham's obedience. Because I have an agreement with Abraham. Stay there. You remember the story of Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel chapter 9, I believe. Mephibosheth was a um, son of Jonathan. And Mephibosheth, uh, Jonathan and David had a covenant. Remember that story? They had a covenant. And that covenant, powerful covenant, and then Jonathan died in battle. And David went to the house and said, is there anybody in this house that I will bless for the sake of Jonathan? I want to say something to you. God's help to us in this season is all because of Jesus Christ. There was an agreement between God and Jesus to save us, to heal us, to bless us, to provide for us, to deliver us, to give us the best. All that pertain to life and godliness, he has given us. The Bible says we have been blessed, Ephesians 1.3, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 1.20.21, 20, all the promises of God are what? Yea and amen in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1 20, 
all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. So irrespective of your location or the season, remember Jacob, he worked for a man by the, his uncle by the name of Laban. Laban was a very corny man. He was a clever 419 guy. He was not straightforward. He changed his salary 10 times. Things were hard for that guy. But the Bible says, if you look at his story, Genesis 31, verses 41 and 42. Thus I have been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters, six years for thy cattle. Thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Except, 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 except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands I rebuked thee yes tonight. Friends, Jacob was saying, I've been with a man who wasn't fair to me. I've been with a man who, who cheated me. But except the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac, the season may look difficult. Except the covenant in Christ Jesus. Except El Shaddai has been on your side. I want to say to you, when things are not looking rosy and they are looking difficult, you need to remember you are a covenant man. There is somebody behind you. There is headquarters behind you. There is a home office behind you. You are not a poor man because there is no money in your pocket. Because what is behind you is bigger than money. What is behind you is the God of the universe. Except the God of Abraham, the fear of Isaac had been with me. Child of God, this morning, I want you to know that covenant will work for you everywhere and anywhere. Joseph, he went into Egypt without a forwarding address. He didn't know anybody there. You could have as well dropped that boy in the Sahara Desert. Some of you have uncles you can call when there are problems. You have friends you can call when there are problems. Joseph had nobody to call. He cannot send an SMS because there was nobody he could call in that place. He had no helper. He had no helper. But there was a help behind him that eyes of men couldn't see. I want to say there's a help behind you that eyes of men cannot see. I want to say there's provision in your life that may be a mystery to somebody else. I want to say God has prepared that table. And because you are a child of God, this morning. I said because you are a child of God this morning. Let's imagine a famous royalty like, like, the, like, like the English royalty and let's imagine one of those princes happens to come to Nigeria and he lost his, his card or something. You know what? One phone call is going to change that. Why? Because he belongs to a family. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. You've been called for to show the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Child of God, this morning I want to say to you, because you belong to him, headquarter is going to answer your case. Headquarter is going to answer your matter. I said, because you belong to him. He said, I've been young and now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Your seed will not beg bread. Your family will not lack in this season because the covenant of blessing is upon your life. The Bible says the more they afflicted them, the more they increased. And Isaac sowed in that year, Genesis 26, 12 to 14, and he reaped a hundredfold. He sowed in that year where the ground is hard for people because of the hand of covenant upon your life the ground will not be hard for you i said where the ground is hard for people because of the covenant upon your life the ground will not be hard for you where people's seeds are being devoured, your seed of business, your seed of money, the things you are using to trade, they are already blessed by the hand of the Lord. When you put it in the ground, it is blessed. The ground you are putting it on is blessed. I'm not looking at your neighbor, I am looking at you. There is the blood of Jesus between you and poverty. There is the blood of Jesus that redeemed you from the cause of the Lord. And because of that blood, your ground is blessed and your seed is blessed. I said 
when your ground is blessed and your seed is blessed because the blood of Jesus has broken the yoke of failure. I said the blood of Jesus has broken the yoke of failure. The blood of Jesus has broken the yoke of poverty. Your seed is blessed and your ground is blessed. In that same year where people were crying, some probably were eating their seed. Isaac put his own seed in the ground and the hand of the Lord was on that seed. I'm telling you this morning, child of God, the hand of the Lord is upon your seed. I'm telling you this morning, child of God, the hand of the Lord is upon your ground. When the blood of Jesus touched the earth for you, curse was broken over your business. When the blood of Jesus touched the earth for you, curse was broken over your ground. Therefore, your seed is blessed. Your ground is blessed. And because your seed is blessed and your ground is blessed, you have no choice. You must prosper in this season. You must increase in this season. Can I get a better amen in the house of the Lord today? In that same place, you can imagine when there's a famine shortage, some people probably ate their seed. But Isaac did what? He sowed that seed in that same place where people were crying it was not enough. Let's go to Genesis 26 verse 12. Put it up. Verse 12 to 14. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received oh lord i love this place not next year not two years time in the same year that means isaac land was here he received a hundredfold this guy we don't know how many he got the other guy we don't know how many he got listen to me the same way in the land of goshen there was no darkness in Egypt, there was darkness. The same way in the land of Goshen, there were no frogs. In Egypt, frogs. You can go down the line. Lies and all those gnats and locusts, they were, they were protected because of that covenant of blessing. I want to say to you, because of the covenant of blessing, in this same year, I'm saying it for myself, in this same year, I will reap a mighty harvest. In this same year, people are saying there's a casting down. There shall be a lifting up for me. Listen, this thing must come out of your mouth for it to work for you. He said, when they say there's a casting down, thou shalt say there's a lifting up. I'm saying in this same year, there shall be abundant harvest for you. The Bible says he reaped a hundredfold in the same year because his seed was blessed. His land was blessed. He himself was carrying a blessing. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 126 from verse 5. Your precious seed in famine must be sown to activate the open hands of God. Your precious seed in famine must be sown to activate the open hands of God. All right. Psalm 126. Let's read it. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. They that sow in tears shall reap what? In joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again. He shall do what? Doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. What is precious seed? Do you remember that widow in Matthew 12, in Mark 12 rather, verse 41 to 44? The Bible says she gave more than everybody. I think she threw in two mites. You know, you know, sometimes you throw in. You don't even give. You throw. Because if you want to drop it, something will say, hold on. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to give something, Kai, not, not now. The woman just did like this. <clears throat> There's give. -o. There's some giving that. Let's imagine that your car broke down in the middle of nowhere. Fuel finish. You had no money on you. Hmm? And somebody comes and say, oh God, what's happen? And the person is holding one jerry can of fuel. And the person gives it to you. I, do you, do you realize that jerry can will be what in your eye? 
more than any amount of money. Because this was, without it, she won't survive. She gave out of her need. That's all she had. Mm. When God told Abraham to go and give Isaac, it wasn't easy. Go to, let's read Psalm 145, 16 again. So thou opened thy hand and satisfied the desire of every living thing. So I say, ah, but the hand of God is open, Pastor. The hand of God is open. Not exactly. It is open, but there's a part you have to do. What if Abraham had not obeyed God? I said, what if Abraham had not obeyed God? Genesis 22, verse 1, we'll read the whole thing, but verse 1 to 14, well, let's just go to verse 9. And they came to the place (laughs) which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his hands. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And then God repeats the promise again to him. Now, your obedience, amen, your obedience releases the open hand of God. We don't know where that ram was all day. Maybe around the mountain. And God was waiting. All right, let's see if Abraham will do his part. How many of you play Ludo? What about draft? You can only pour once. If you, if you, if you throw your dice, rather, one time. You can't throw twice until the other person plays. God will never move out of order. Father, open your hand. God said, you too, open your hand. All the amen in church just kind of went down a little bit now. Don't worry, I'll preach this part myself. I came with my amen and hallelujah for this part. Because that ram was prepared. But God told Abraham, take your son, your only son. Elijah, make for me first. If it's not first, it's not worship. If it's not first, it's not. He said, take your son. I know the other one is your son, but I know your really first son is Isaac. And he took the boy. If you are the boy, you know your father has been cleaning the animal for sacrifice. Your father has said, okay, today is me and you. We are going to that mountain. And papa did not carry any goat. No sheep, no chicken. He carried a knife. He took uh, fire, everything, and you. He even told the other servants to wait that you and him will go and come back. How many of you sincerely will follow that, your father? He said, Daddy, thank you for this invitation, but I think I will be praying for you when you go, when you come back. But they went on that journey. I want to say, as you hear the voice of God, you need to be obedient to God. God might be telling you, bless that your next neighbor. He may be telling you to worship him in your, in your giving and your tithing. He may be telling you to take one step, but there must be something God is saying to you that you need to obey. Because as you obey God, it may not be big, but that little thing will cost you to experience the hand of God. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? As I conclude this morning, let me say something to you. In Genesis 17 verse 1, we'll pick it up in the next service. God told Abraham, 
The Bible says, when Abraham was 90 and 9 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, Abraham, walk before me and be blameless or perfect. That's Genesis, Genesis 17. 1. 13 years had gone by. God did not talk to him. Because when Abraham got tired, himself and Mama Sarah produced a child on their own that God was not in it. The guy's name, Ishmael. 13 years later, when Abraham felt, Kai, it's too late. Are you hearing me? It's too late. His body was now dead, according to Romans chapter 4, from verse 17 to 21. Sarah's body had been dead a long time. Sometimes in our lives, God comes to us in a season where we feel it's too late. Say, God, I have done everything. Is it now? It's now morning. You didn't send man that will marry me when I was 20-something. Is it now that I am almost 40 or over 40 or over, near to 50? Who told you? Who told you? Who told you you are too old to be blessed by God? Who told you you are too late to be blessed by God? Man may tell you that, but God is not telling you that. Who told you? God deliberately waited until the two bodies were dead. And then in Genesis 17, 17, God to Abraham advised God. He said, God, okay, God. He bowed before God. Sometimes when somebody wants to make a stupid request, they will, they will respect you. And they insult you by this respect. Say, Abraham, bow before the Lord. Ah, <laughs> daddy. Oh, let Ishmael live before you. Mommy. God said, do you know who you are talking to? He said, God, he said, God, he said, God, I'm just advising you, in case you have forgotten my biological clock, I'm about 100. That one we did with Hagar, my body was still working, but now, God, I don't die. He said, I don't die. Two dead people, how are you going to produce this miracle? He said, I am El Shaddai. I am the all-breasted one. El Shaddai means the all-breasted one. A baby gets milk from the mother. Children don't go to the kitchen to cook spaghetti. Babies don't go to the kitchen to make gari, to make pounded yam, to make rice. Everything the baby gets is already prepared in the mother's milk. All that baby has to do is just keep drinking what the mother has prepared. What God, when God said to Abraham, I'm El Shaddai, is that what you need to produce that baby is in me. And if you are drinking from the breast of God, everything you need is going to be supplied. I don't know what you need this morning. It may be a car. It may be a house. The breast of El Shaddai is going to supply that need in your life. It's not too hard for God. As long as El Shaddai is alive. All our needs are going to be met by his riches in glory. He said, I am El Shaddai, the all-breasted one. Please stand to your feet this morning. If it's your El Shaddai, lift your hand. It's all in him. It's all in him. I know it looks impossible in the natural, but that thing is in him. The God of heaven will meet it. Lift your hand and talk to him. Lift your hand and just talk to him this morning. Mention that need before the Lord and say you are El Shaddai, you are the all-breasted one. You will do exceedingly, abundantly above all I can ask or think. He said, I am El Shaddai, I am the all-breasted one. Lift your hands and bless him this morning. I'm praying for you as you go into this week. Father, in the name of Jesus, you told Abraham you are El Shaddai. You are the all-breasted one. Everything that we need is in you. It's already in you. And if we are you like a baby, we can get every nutrient, every provision from the hand of our Father, from the breast of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nothing too hard for you. Therefore, Father, this week as we go, we declare you are the God of our provision. Every
everything we need is there in you. All spiritual blessings are in you. You will lead us by the still waters. You will lead us by the green pastures. This week, I prophesy increase. I prophesy open doors. This week, I prophesied that delayed payments, they will be made to you. Approvers, approvers, approver. Stamps of approver. Stamps, I'm saying stamps of approver. Doors being flung open for the children of God. I call it forth because El Shaddai is our father. El Shaddai is our provider. Men are coming to you. Women are coming to you. Businesses are prospering. The God of heaven is seen to it that your cup is running over this week. You believe that lift your head in Jesus' name and say a big amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.